good morning or almost afternoon. This is Meg at Chasing Retro. <clears throat> As promised, I am taking you with me on my journey to create these retro kitchen cookbook binders and journals. Uh, there will be three binders. One of them I will be keeping. One of the binders that I don't have yet is a custom order for someone. And then I have three more books that will be the same theme, but not, they will be um, to be determined. I'm either going to do ring bound like Carrie at the Paper Monkey just did with hers. Please go check that out. It's a video below that I will link in my description box. I really like the way that she did hers. I feel like with cookbook journals, you want them to be able to lay flat. And so I'm, I'm pondering and considering making the three books that I have into the ring bound journals. But I would love to know y'all's opinion, especially if any of you have one of these in your sites that you would like to purchase. Um, I'm you know, willing to reserve something for someone. There's a little bit of a difference between reserved and custom. Custom means you get a lot of the say in what I put into the journal and how I construct it and the details that I add. And I put a little bit higher price point on the custom ones, but the reserved ones are, if you see one that you like, you like the way it's going, and you're like, I know I'm gonna like this one at the end, you can go ahead and email me that you would like to reserve that one for you. And I'll give you a ballpark figure of the price if I know it yet. And then you can, I will put that journal in my shop with your name on it. So that's just a little bit of a segue there. Um, the first one that I'm going to work on today is the one that I will be keeping for myself. Um, this one, let me get the other one that's similar to it. Okay, so I have both of these. They're as you can see, you you probably at first glance would think they're the same, but I believe one of them has a very slightly smaller spine. So this one that's a little bit more coming apart, I think is just, I'm talking maybe a fourth of an inch wider spine. I think this one was 19... 68 and this was 1965. I think that's the only difference between them. Uh, of course, this one has the stain from the hot stove eye. Uh, so I was just going to make this one mine because I really don't mind that. But yes, both of these need a bolstered spine. This one is not broken yet, but it's on its way. And this one is completely broken. As When I say broken, I mean... <clears throat> The inside is still connected with this library binding cloth, but this outside fabric has become ripped and is pulling away and you can see the metal inside. So that's what I'm going to work on today is bolstering the outside spines of both of these and then reinforcing the inside library. I call it library binding. Um, I keep finding little things in here. <laughs> There's another top value stamp. I'm going to bolster this little library fabric binding. What I have chosen to do the inside reinforcing with is this. This is just carpet tape that I bought at Lowe's. I'm sure all of you have seen tutorials on how to do this. I believe it's a little over one inch wide. Yeah, it's like one and a half. Um, and it's got this grid pattern, of course, so it's very it, nearly impossible to rip, uh, but you can cut it. And so it is a really good thing for bolstering flimsy items. And I just laid some vintage red gingham that I had on top of this one sticky side. And then what I will do is I will peel this off and you can really get it right next to this binder ring mechanism and I'm going to put it here to be determined I may wrap around here I'm not sure my husband says that I should but I don't know if that I don't want to have so much up here that it makes it wonky to close um, you have to be careful with that I normally do wrap 
the entire spine of a normal journal that I make with the outside fabric, but because I'm doing two separate fabrics this time, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I might just leave the top exposed like that. And when you get a junk journal, especially a vintage cookbook, you expect it to look worn. I think it's kind of neat. Of course, this part will be a little harder to see because the fabric will go to here, but you would see it if you looked right down on it. This is all if I decide not to wrap it around, of course, like that. I just, I don't want it to be awkward. I know I still have the plastic on the back, but I really don't want it to be awkward and um, we open weird. So, like I said, this is a learning process for me too. I've only made one binder and it was a garden binder that I kept for myself and it did not need anything done to the spine. So this is new territory for me. Okay, so what I am going to start off with is I wanted to show you some of the fabric choices that I have. I don't have to decide on all of it right now, but I just really like to have everything picked out before I start creating and making this fun. So some of these fabrics I've had for a long time. Some of it I've gotten from my mom. Some of it I got in Happy Mail. Some of it I got in Happy Mail yesterday from Jen. So here is one possibility. I love this because I do plan to bring pink into the inside of the journal pages and contents. So this one has pink and red as well. And it is a pretty close red to that. And of course it's got the navy. I'm assuming this is navy and not black unless my eyes are playing tricks on me. So I really like this a lot. I also love, for, at least for me, fabrics on the spine of a cookbook, cookbook journal that are dark because I know that I will be getting messy in the kitchen. I always do. And it, it would be disastrous if I put something pristine and white on the edge. I also have this, not loving this quite as much, although it does, you know, fit the bill. And it is just long enough to do it this way, like it needs to be with the flowers up and down. But I really, really like that navy with the flowers. So that's what I'm leaning toward right now. I love this one as well, but it's just a little, it's very elegant, but it's a little less retro than I was going for, at least for my personal one. Now, as I go through these, if you see any fabrics that you, if you would like to reserve a journal and would like to put in a request, I might can accommodate that for one of the other journal spines. You know what, before I keep going, let me show you the other journals again, in case you didn't see my community post yesterday. So I will be doing this one for myself, this one for my shop, this one for my shop. I believe this is a home ec version of a Betty Crocker cookbook. So you see the home ec teachers there and she's instructing and the back is just beautiful. I'm excited that I get to preserve this cookbook because I just don't see this one as often. In fact, I had, I had to order this one off of Facebook Marketplace. So this one is also very much loved. It is literally only attached with the library fabric binding inside. Um, I plan to cover all of the this as beautiful as it is. Um, I like this a little bit more than I like the bright, bright yellow in the, you know, Thanksgiving looking picture. Um, I, w I do want this to look, uh, a lot of this type of stuff, the handwritten things and all that will be inside the book itself. So I'm not trying to cover up anything that looks handwritten. Believe me, there will be so many handwritten notes and stuff that I plan to add into these journals from that are on ephemera that I think it's okay if I cover this. Plus, it gives me a blank slate for adding a big fabric pocket or whatever I want, and it adds some harmony because it will be the same here and here, and it will not match, but it will correspond with the fabric on the outside and as well as this. So I think this works great for this book as well because it's mostly black and white and red. So this will be going here. And then I will be putting scrapbook paper over this. 
I'm using loosely a tutorial that I found on a blog of a lady who is also on YouTube. I will link the blog post below. Um, unfortunately, it's not a video, so she describes what she does in a paragraph form and gives you photos. But it's very similar to how I normally reinforce a book spine anyway, so I think I'm going to be able to be okay without a video. But just want to let you know that I will be linking that as well. The three books that I will be turning into cookbook journals, possibly ring bound, is this one. This is a pretty large square one. I love the green, so I can do a lot with fabrics with the screen because I do I have a lot of fabrics with red, green, and white in them. This one, a junior cookbook, which is very similar because it's got the buffalo check. And last but not least, this one that you guys, I think everybody flipped out about. I did too when I saw this at the fill a bag sale. It's beautiful. And in fact, let me show you um, the fabric for these. If I decide to do the ring bound and not rebuilt spine, I will be saving this. Don't worry. I will save this and make it as a bookmark or something. These, if I decide to do the ring bound, I will copy what Carrie the Paper Monkey did because she's brilliant and it looked great. She made washi tape with fabric and the fabric of her choice. And she, once she cut the cover off and punched the holes, or maybe she put it on before the punch, she wrapped the edge of the top and bottom cover with this. And so it gave a little punch of color. You still have the effect of fabric on the spine, if you will, but it gives a bolstering to the holes that you will be opening and closing so much with the rings. So that's what I'll be doing. And I thought maybe for this cookbook, this fabric that I got from Jenny yesterday is perfect because this is not really a red. It's more of a salmon color and this is more of a dove blue and so I thought that might be so pretty. What do y'all think? Okay, so keep those six in mind or really five in mind because I get, you know, I get to pick which one, which fabric goes on mine and y'all yell through the screen if you see one that you just think works really well. I'm just like, I wish, don't you wish? I guess this is why people do live videos. I think this one looks really cute with the Better Homes as well. I really like that. This one is adorable, but I'm probably going to shy away from white because of staining. And also, um, it I'm going to be using Tyvek, but the Tyvek that I use is not the kind that you pay for. It's the free Tyvek envelopes that you can get from USPS website. And so you have this in here. And if you have white fabric, you're gonna see that. So. I usually try to get a fabric that is not gonna allow those words to come through. I have this, of course. I have this beautiful fabric from my mom and it would make a beautiful spine, I think, but I mainly pulled this out because I can cut these into squares and make journaling cards or tags out of them. They're just so beautiful. Y'all, I love this fabric. I love the way it looks with the red. So this is a very high contender for sure. Where did I put the green one? Here it is. I also think it would look great with this one because it's got that green. It would be about this wide if I did the ring bound like Carrie did. That gives you an idea. And then I have this, which is a quilted piece that I found at an antique store. I know that Carla Frizzell uses quilted pieces as spines very often, and it just looks so amazing. Let's see if I can fold it just right. That looks like feed sack to me. So that is another option. I'm quite liking that, actually. This might be a winner. I wish I could... I wish I could do interchangeable spines because <laughs> there's so many beautiful fabrics. 
Okay, I have this one pulled out, but now that I look at it next to some of these others, though it looks very beautiful with this, um, I don't know, it does look pretty, doesn't it? I just feel like it's not quite as retro as I think this cookbook should be. It harmonizes beautifully, but it's not really the retro look. But I will be keeping it because, um, the, you know, I can make other things to go inside. I have this fabric, which would also be beautiful on this green one. And also on this one. <laughs> and then I have this one, which has a little more dark blue, which is also beautiful. It looks good with this as well. Um, this one, again, I pulled it out, but I think I got this from Dale last week. It is beautiful with it. I just don't know that it fits the retro theme. Um, this one. That one's okay. That, that is an awesome contender. I really like the salmon, though. I don't know. I really wish I had some of y'all in the room with me to help me make these decisions because I feel like this is the hardest part of a journal is the spine fabric. I don't know why I have so much trouble with it. It's fun, but it's also extremely frustrating because I cannot make a decision. I got this little scrap out. I got this at the Recraft store. It's literally, I'm just so glad people hold on to this, you know, because I can use this. It is barely wide enough, but it would it would actually work barely. But I love that. It, I wish it was a little bit darker blue. But that is a, a big contender for my personal one. And maybe another one of these. Like I said, I also have this one. So. <clears throat> I have, okay, that's, that's the last of the spine choices. I also pulled these out. These are, I think, this is just fabric. Waverly Pantry Shelf is what it's called. So these are beautiful. They don't really match the covers in any way, shape, or form, except maybe this one. But the print is also too big for a spine. So I pulled this out because I will be using this as a whole page pocket in large fabric pockets inside the journals. This one as well, I believe this was a curtain panel. And it is, it has the 70s colors, but it has sort of a late 50s, early 60s feel to it. So it reminds me of something that you would see on Andy Griffith in their kitchen or dining room. I know that show is mostly black and white, I really didn't watch the color episodes. I kind of stopped watching it when they turned into color episodes. But And then last but not least is this beautiful quilted material that I've probably had for three years. And I would really consider making the front and back pockets out of this because you have more room for bulk in these front and back covers. And I just love the way it looks. The colors are perfect. I love the way it looks like the faux quilting. Okay, so those are my fabric choices. I'm going to pause it now. I'm going to make a decision for my personal journal spine, and then I'll bring you back as I start bolstering and constructing. All right, everyone. I have decided what I'm using. Are you ready? I decided to go with the navy with the pink and red from Jenny. So thank you, Jenny. Your happy mail came at the perfect time. And I will have enough left over that I want to use it again. I can, of course. But this will be the spine of my cookbook journal. Mine will be the guinea pig. So, so if I make mistakes and learn from them, it will be on mine. Not, not the ones for sale. So I opened the rings to make it easier to lay flat on my workspace. Now I'm going to get my Tyvek. I may have a piece already cut. 
Nope, that's not cut yet. One second. That might be all I have. No, here's some. That is actually the perfect width. So I'll use that. Normally I have to measure and everything, but this looks like it is exact. Okay, let's see if I can cut this evenly. It helps having the letters on here because it kind of helps you know. It's like those grid lines they put on the backs of wrapping paper for you. All right. I like to cut the folded parts off too because it won't, I need it to adhere flat. So I'm going to trim very so slightly any of the parts that are a part of the original envelope edge that was folded. right under this E. I don't think I cut that straight. I did not. Sometimes I'll use a, of course now I won't be able to find one. <laughs> Sometimes I use a Sharpie to just mark a, a line for cutting. This top it can be hard to cut. <laughs> hard to get your scissors going on it. All right, do I have it too tall? I think I do, just a little bit too tall. All right, let's trim it again. <laughs> All right, now it is time for the glue. This is the part that makes me nervous. I'm being real with y'all. I want y'all to know that no matter how many journals I make, I still get nervous when I do certain parts of the process. Really nervous. <clears throat> that is popping up weird, but I think I can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue it and then we're going to use this card, any flat thing that you have, to adhere it as best you can into that little divot right there. Now, my, my glue of choice is Fabrifix. I believe in the tutorial she used Mod Podge, which when I think about it, that probably works very, very well because it's such a full coverage application. However, I feel like in my experience at least, this will hold up over time. I mean, a long, long time. And I don't know about Mod Podge on something that is going to be consistently opened and closed. I could be very wrong about that, very, very wrong. Um, but I just choose to use this. Another thing I like about this is it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So after you put it on and place your paper, if you look down here and you're like, oh my word, it's half an inch off, you have about five minutes to still move and tweak it exactly like you would like it to be. 
Um, I still need to trim this. So I really like that. I don't, Mod Podge, I feel like is a little less forgiving. Now I do love Mod Podge for many things. In fact, I'll be using it a lot for these journals and you'll see that later because it provides an excellent um, coverage for things that might receive water, things that are printed to be specific uh, because printer ink and water don't play nicely. So, but I just, I just love Fabri-Tac. I know it is expensive. I know, I mean, believe me, it literally kills me every time I have to buy another bottle. But I want these journals to stay together for 20 plus years, you know. <laughs> I want these to be handed down to someone else after you are done with it. I should not be gluing over the book. This is also a no-no <laughs> because if you make a mistake, it drips right onto your product. But again, this is my journal and for purposes of this video, so it won't be a four hour video. I'm taking a few shortcuts. Okay, so Ideally, you would provide full coverage in that you would use a um, paintbrush, not paintbrush, don't use a paintbrush with this, um, one of those silicone brushes or your finger to smear it. I don't like putting my finger on this glue just because I feel like if it smells as bad as it does, it cannot be good for you to go into your skin. So I just try to do full coverage as best I can like this. <laughs> a completely different matter with tacky glue. I will put my hands all in that. I don't care at all. But with this stuff, it just feels too toxic to me. So I think once we press it down, it will fill in all the gaps. Okay, this is the tricky part. Trying to get it in the middle. Okay, I'll slide it to the right just a little. Now comes the pressing part. I usually do the creases first. Also make sure, well, the book is not, there we go. You wanna make sure that you can still open and close your book before it's completely set. And like I said, you have some some time to work, work with it and make sure it's exactly like you want it, but you don't have an hour. <laughs> you still have to work pretty quickly. This will be the first layer of bolstering, the first layer of protection. The second layer will be the fabric. And fabric, typically I like to apply fabric with either Mod Podge or, um, I'm just gonna put a little more glue right here, either Mod Podge or tacky, tacky glue, because I feel like that this glue, when it seeps through fabric, it sometimes stays. Like you can see the lines and I don't want that to be the case on these journals, obviously. So I will be using either Mod Podge or Tacky Glue for the fabric application. Okay. I think now is the time where I need to go ahead and do the inside tape. That way, if I decide to wrap it around, my fabric that I chose is dark enough that it will be able to cover the little bit that hangs over the edge. Okay, let's see how much I want to, I'm still undecided about this, y'all. I don't know if I want to wrap it around or not. I feel like I will regret doing it. I feel like this is going to be okay.
I just, I'm afraid it won't wrap nicely. Maybe I should try a little sample. Okay. Let me see how thick it is once I remove this. All right, let me find something that I can practice on. Okay, I have grabbed a book that I'm not going to use the cover on. So I'm just gonna see what it looks like when I wrap it around. It doesn't seem that much thicker than fabric, honestly. The carpet tape's pretty thin. It does buckle a little bit. I just have to decide if it's worth that to me. You know what? My husband is the engineer. He says that he thinks it would be best to do that, so we're gonna do what he says. He knows better than me with certain things like that. So we're gonna cut this with enough, um, get enough uh, overhang to fold over. If I end up getting a funny bump or something, I can always put, I'm gonna put Rick Rack or some sort of trim this way, I can always put another something here. Because junk journalers know that you can always, almost always, turn a mistake into something that looks like you intended to do it. These are approximately 12 inch pieces that I uh, made. I'm gonna be very quiet for this part so I will not mess up. It's okay if it's not 100% straight because, um, at least for me, I will be, one second, oh, I knew that was going to happen. It's sticking to the page. I will be covering the inside and pages with cardstock so I can hide any of this that is not straight. Okay, so I wrapped it. Ideally, I probably should have wrapped it a little bit more. I should have given myself a little bit more room, but you know, I feel good about it. I don't think it looks bad. I think it's laying nicely like it should. It's a little bit past this, but that's fine. That just means I move my fabric over a little bit. However, I also like the unexpected bonus that <laughs> wrapping it around helps secure this little piece right here on this corner and where it wants to flip up where the glue just has a hard time sticking down. And it just looks nice in here now. Really nice. I like that a lot. All right, let's do the other side. I'm gonna fast forward this part so you won't have to watch the whole thing.
okay, we have the pieces down and they're, for the most part, straight. It, it bows a little bit right here, but like I said, once you put that beautiful scrapbook paper or fabric, whatever you choose for your project. All right, now it is time for the part I'm more familiar with, <laughs> the fabric on the spine. So I measure, normally I would measure this times two because I wrap it all the way through for a regular book, but this, this will be ending here and here. I may do a little overhang because I like that frayed look. So I need to do about 10 inches long by, oh, I'm, I need a tape measure for this because it's curved. ruler won't really do. Look at this. It's it's buckling a little bit. I knew that that would probably happen. But as long as it is stuck here and here and you're going to put another layer of stuff, I think we're going to be good. It just didn't get in that crevice very well. This was the cover that was in worse shape. So... So I need to do about four and a quarter wide. 10 by four and a quarter. It's probably very close to 10 already. It is. Okay, let me do four and a quarter first. Y'all can't see, but I'm using my cutting mat to measure down here. Oh, that is cut off just a little bit. Hmm. Let's, let's cut a strip off of this so I can have a clean edge. When you have to do that, keep this because this is perfect for a tag. This fabric tears very, very easily too. Four and a quarter. Okay. Yep. Looking good. And then I don't normally measure for this part. I said 10 inches, but it's probably going to be right at 10. Yeah. This piece seems a little bit off. Let me rip another piece here to get a pretty raw edge. Yeah, I like that fray. Perfect pocket, look at that. Perfect pocket. All right, get my paper towel because this is the messy part. It's time to use the tacky glue. I normally just put it directly on the book. Instead of trying to put it on the fabric. <laughs> I 
put it right past the Tyvek ending, knowing that I probably will need more, but I would like to do that, adhere to that after I get the whole thing down. Because again, time is of the essence and we don't have a long, long time to sit and measure and make sure we've got exactly the, the right amount of glue on here because it will dry. It may look like I'm putting a ton, but it's okay. You have to have it full coverage on this one so you won't have bubbles in the fabric. All right. I'm glad tacky glue is cheap. <laughs> I don't feel bad about using a ton. This reminds me of being in school. Do y'all remember paste? Do they even still use paste? I think it was a form of glue that was just less traumatic if we were to spill it in the classroom. <laughs> That's my theory. And it had this little applicator stick, but none of us used that. We used our hands. And there's always the joke that there's one kid that always eats the paste. I was not that child, but I'm sure we had them in our class. Who did? <laughs> There's also the kid who always eats Play-Doh too. Now I did taste Play-Doh once. I did not see the appeal, unless you just really like salt. All right. The easiest way to see if you've got this on evenly is to look at it from the top. It appears to be. Where's my card? use the card on the curved surface as well as um, when you make a regular junk journal you can use the card for the whole thing okay, I'm gonna close the rings and I'm gonna make sure that it is closing and opening normally watching to see what it does when I open it again it's okay Sometimes you'll have this big piece that juts out, but not this time. And then I set this aside to dry for at least 30 minutes um, before I go to the next step. I need to adhere this a little better. The next step will be, of course, the, um, the, the rig rack or the trim. <laughs> the glue is tired. It says, leave me alone. I have done enough. All right, so there is a little bit on the edge here that's flipping up that I'll probably go back once the main part of this has dried and tacked down. Sometimes I use Fabri-Tac for that part just because I like the very outer edge to be really, really on there, but not always. And then we will adhere the rick rack. Now, I didn't note this and I did not do this on this journal, but Sometimes to give the look of a sewn spine, before you glue this piece down, you can always run a zigzag stitch all the way around. It's real pretty when you do that. And it looks like you've sewn it onto the book and of course you have not. Um, I chose not to do that because this pattern was so busy. But if you have a less uh, intense pattern, you can certainly do that and it looks really cool. You can even use a decorative stitch on your sewing machine. So I let it dry partially open. I don't close it all the way and I don't have it all the way open because you you don't want it to get, you don't want it to dry completely 
open because sometimes, sometimes, depending on the age of the book, when you close the book, when it's dry, it will pull away part of the front cover image. That has happened to me before. It is not fun. I cried. So I usually let them dry like this, sort of half open, half closed. And I'll come back when it's dry and we will add our trim. Okay, I am back. The fabric is dry and I am going to now attach the Rick Rack that I've chosen, which is a vintage Rick Rack that's really wide red. I love it. <clears throat> So this part, I will use a <laughs> bib to protect my book while I put this on. I do like to put the glue directly on the rig rack, obviously, because you can't forecast where the bumps and valleys are on your book. Need a little more up here. It was not coming out good at the beginning. Here we go. Sorry for the loud noise, the traffic noise. I opened our door to the deck next to me because the weather is so nice today wanted some fresh air. I cut that one a little too long, but I'm not gonna cut it until the glue is dry so I don't get it on my scissors. <laughs> yeah. Now, some people like to put this a little bit further over to cover up the raw edge. Um, personally, I like it to show, I like the raw edge to show. That's just a personal thing. So I'm gonna put it sort of in the middle of that fabric band. Adorable, adorable. Exactly the look that I was hoping for. I'm gonna use my small scissors to trim that. There we go. All right, let me clean my glue bottle. Okay, it is complete. Ready to be lined with paper in here, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, cut it to the width and length that you want it. If you would like to sew around the edge of your cardstock first to give that faux sew look, look, you can do that. I will probably do that to mine and then glue it down again with Fabri-Tac, a lot of it. And then you can add pockets or whatever you'd like at that point. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.